Let's talk about unimolecular diffusion. As the name implies, there is only one molecule or species going to diffuse. So it is also known as diffusion of one component in another stagnant or non-diffusing component. So why is so? Either it is stagnant, the other medium, or it will not diffuse. First example will be maybe in this case you have one tube in the lab and you have some benzene. So this liquid benzene and this is air. Probably you know that air is present in the atmosphere and you probably also know that benzene is likely to be volatile and it's going to vaporize. So actually yes, that's going to happen. Some benzene is going to go up here and we want to study this case. This case in specific is called Stefan flow because we have the non-diffusing component going from side to side and taking some evaporation. So in this case, the benzene composition here will be zero, but after passing to this tube, the benzene composition in air will increase. Eventually, you know that as time passes by, evaporation goes and the distance between these will, will increase. The other case might be a species that is not going to dissolve, sorry, to diffuse. For instance, ammonia in air goes into water, so you got this stagnant, it will be the stagnant material, water will not be diffusing to the air, or at least not is this is not the case of study. And you know that ammonia actually goes and diffuses to water, air will actually not be considered but actually in real life you can have some oxygen and nitrogen diffusing but right now we're going to assume that the nitrogen or sorry, the ammonia flow is much more uh, relevant for our study okay so as you can see let me erase this there are two phases here the liquid phase and the gas phase in which we have one species a and the other one non diffusing b in this case we got air which is the the non-diffusing species and a the diffusing species okay so what or why do we have to study this case you can see this is pretty common examples of diffusion you probably know that if you open a tank of volatile material let it be gasoline well some vapors are going to vaporize so we are interested on this phenomenon and also actually this is also of interest because we, in applications such as absorption, probably you don't know it so far, but maybe we want to get rid of this ammonia. So we have water, we wash the air, ammonia goes into water, and now air is clean of ammonia. Okay. Now we already saw case A, in which we had maybe a tank which has plenty of A and a tank which has plenty of B and therefore we expected A to go to the right and B to go to the left in the same manner because they had pressure, temperature, similar conditions therefore this was equimolar flow or diffusion now in this specific case we're going to talk about unimolecular diffusion and as the name implies there's only one molecule or one species going into diffusion now the easiest case I imagine is when you work at the lab and you are using a volatile material, let's say benzene or xane, whatever material you know that it's going to evaporate, and we got air. Now you know that it is much likely that benzene goes to the atmosphere and diffuses, and this is done via evaporation, then air going into the benzene. So this is why we can assume unimolecular diffusion in which benzene goes from high concentration to low concentration and this is done via diffusion. Okay, so this one specific case, of course we have more cases, but let's see how it goes with the model. Now let's start with one dimensional steady state diffusion. Remember that for a binary system we can model A as follows. The total mole flux of A equals mole flux of A according to diffusion plus mole flux of A due to bulk movement. This will be because it's moving. If we have, for example, we have a pipe. In this specific case, of course, it will not be a bulk movement, but you can still consider it. Actually, you need to consider it because this is done via other species. Now, let me clean this away. 
we have this right here. According to fixed law, we got JA as follows. So this can be substituted by the diffusivity times the driving force, which is concentration divided by distance. Now we have the molar fraction. We can substitute this for concentration. Why concentration? Because we are using concentrations right here. So it will be of use or interesting we can get concentration right here. And very interesting that the total mole flux is always equal to the addition of all the mole flux. Now in this specific case, as stated before guys, we are going to have zero mole flux of B because it is stagnant or not diffusing. So let's see how it goes. Substitute JA by fixed law right here. Substitute the molar fraction of A with respect to concentrations and substitute the total mole flow with NA and AB. Now interestingly, as stated before guys, the mole flow in the specific case of air it's almost zero, so it will be because we assume this is stagnant or maybe non-diffusing, we can say NB equals zero. So from our previous equation, we can get rid of this, which is here, zero. So we are left with this, which is exactly this. Now let's continue. So we are using ideal gas, as stated before, we are analyzing the simplest case, which is gas gas, benzene vapor phase goes to the air which is gas phase now according to ideal gas we can't and if you don't remember go back but we can get concentration according to partial pressures we are going to work now with partial pressures either select partial pressure or molar fraction so get rid of concentration of a it's kinda it's a little bit hard to calculate the concentration of a in air it's much easier to calculate the partial pressure of a in the air not only that, if we were to differentiate, we will have this right here because pressure changes with respect to the distance. We need to model this as this differential. R is a constant and temperature is also a constant because con temperature is fixed. So we get this. Now remember from this equation right here, what we're going to do is substitute this guy right here. So we got that the differential equals this. So what we want to do is change this into this. And that's what we do. Okay, now interestingly, now we have concentration, pressure, and molar flux. Let's see how we can rearrange in order to favor molar flux. Okay, we have the same equation right here. Recall that, and let me go back a little bit that the molar fraction of A equals concentration of A divided by total concentration or partial pressure of A divided by total pressure. So that's what I'm going to do. Substitute this guy right here into pressure. Technically, you know that this is YA and YA could be converted to this. And what I'm going to do is get common terms. I want mole flux. So let me pass this to the left. And this is exactly this right here. So P, A, and P. We got this differential part into this right hand side. What I'm going to do is to take common uh, species which is mole flux. This is what I want actually. I want this because this is what we want to model, the model flux due to diffusion. So we get this concept right here. Let me send it to the right. Also importantly guys, I want to solve the differential equation. If you remember how to solve differential equations, we can split this into two sides. The left side, which is in terms of length or distance, and the right side, which is in terms of partial pressure of A. Okay, so this is, of course, depending on partial pressure. So let me change it this way. And the left side remains here. The right side remains as this. Now, interestingly, we know that the molar flux will not depend on C, so we can take it away. And also, interestingly, what I want to do is try to manipulate and see if we, I can simplify this integral, this integration. And yes, I can if I use P 
it will be p divided by p which is p minus p a divided by p a division of a division implies that i can take this away here so this is what i'm doing the left side remains the same i took away also these constant values and i only got p up here now it's time to actually solve the integral so the left side is easy this is c evaluated in both sides so c2 minus c1 and i'm not going to show you all the math process but trust me when you solve this integral you get the natural logarithm of pa no, total pressure important p total minus pa2 divided by p total minus pa1 once again this is constant as you can see i took this away out this pressure is constant total pressure in the system is constant so i took it away so i get let me clean this out i get this this huge constant and this pressure concept and what i wanted was the model flux of a so this is my equation based on partial pressures and you will see plenty of equations which maybe even get the lat the logarithmic mean of pressures or maybe you want to change take out a weight p so on but i like to use this one because it's the simplest to use you have the diffusivity you have the total pressure and total temperature of the system r is always given and you know the length of diffusion you can solve given that you know the partial pressure change so actually here is the driving force which is driving force is partial pressure and the distance the resistance okay now let's use molar fractions so remember from our initial equation this is let me go all the way back this is right here when you start developing you add molar flow here and because there is no flow of b you got this right here let's start developing that from here what i'm going to do is to essentially try to solve for molar fraction so ca i remember that ca equals the molar fraction of a times the total concentration so what i'm going to do is try to substitute this value here not only that i'm going to take away the concentration because the total concentration is always constant so actually we have the differential of the molar flow interestingly guys you can see that i have ya here and ya here you can see what i'm going to do i take similar steps this two goes to the left common species is molar flux one minus ya past this dividing this is constant and let's try to solve this differential equation first things first will be this one goes to the left and this is the actual integral because actually c or the total concentration and d the diffusivity these guys are constant so i can take them away these are away from the integral and molar flux is also independent of c so let's try to solve both sides the left side is easy the right side is a little bit more complex so it goes always from one to two what does one and two means those are the positions now once solving the left side and solving the right side i got this solving for the molar flux this goes dividing remember that the integral is natural logarithm and what i do here is i got a negative sign i want to use a positive sign in order to get ya2 and ya1 in this order so pretty similar i get the molar flux of a in unimolecular diffusion as follows now guys let me show you these are both cases molar fraction and partial pressures let's see what's the main difference and which or what are the main advantages and disadvantages so the first thing i can see here is that you will need to have the total concentration in order to work with this equation if you don't have a concentration or it, if it's hard to get a concentration you will not be able to use this diffusivities are actually the same and the length of course you need to know it now in this specific case we don't need temperatures so if temperature is not given only concentration 
go ahead. Also important to note that we will know or need to know the molar fractions. In the benzene example it's pretty easy because you can assume this is almost zero and this is almost one. So you could in theory assume this, of course this is not zero, this will be 0 0.000, 000 etc. And in the right side, well main advantage is also that you don't need pressures right here. Let's clean up and let's see here. Main advantage, no need of concentration. So if concentration is hard to get, you don't need it. Uh, disadvantage is that if you don't know temperature or the total pressure, you cannot use this. Main advantage is that you will have a very interesting profile on pressures. Also note that pressures, partial pressures are much easier to work with, to get from a lab and so on. Molar fractions, not that easy. But pressures, you just go and check out manometer or maybe even you can assume uh, atmospheric conditions or vapor pressures. So in my opinion, I will say this is easiest, even though depends on the specific case. You can use actually both of them. Doesn't mean that it is impossible to relate these two guys right here. Okay, so this was unimolecular diffusion. Let's see one example. Let's see how it goes.